The unmistakable roar of the A-10 Warthog's engine sends shivers down the spines of its foes, while its robust armor and formidable weaponry can pierce enemy armored vehicles as if they were mere tin cans. The A-10's heavy armor makes it a tough nut to crack, allowing it to withstand enemy fire and continue its mission, ensuring that it can return safely to base even after taking a considerable amount of damage. With nearly half a century of dedicated service in the U.S. Air Force, this aircraft has become an enduring symbol of American air power. However, despite its age, the A-10 is far from retiring. In fact, it was slated for yet another upgrade, proving that this battle-tested vehicle is still very much in the game. Now, this upgrade is ready for testing, and some countries are shocked by the remarkable rebirth of the Warthog. Join us as we explore the reasons behind the Russia panic as the USAF tests the new Super A-10 Warthog. You might be wondering why the U.S. Air Force continues to rely on the A-10 Warthog, a venerable aircraft that took its first flight way back in 1976. After all, sleek and advanced fighters like the F-35 Lightning are still in service. Well, it's simply because the A-10 excels in the crucial role of providing close air support to ground forces. It's the go-to aircraft for hanging over the battlefield and supporting troops on the ground, a task that the F-35 isn't designed for. The A-10 Warthog stands out because it's purpose-built for this job. Sure, it might not be as elegant or graceful as the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle or the F-16 Fighting Falcon, but it possesses a unique set of virtues that make it indispensable. The heart of this aircraft is its primary weapon, a 30mm automatic rotating Gatling-style gun known as the GAU-8A Avenger. The GAU-8A Avenger is one of the most potent aircraft guns in its class. First off, this beauty weighs nearly two American tons. Secondly, it boasts a jaw-dropping rate of fire, spitting out 3,900 rounds per minute. This means the Avenger can pierce armored vehicles at a distance of 1,312 yards sending 65 rounds downrange every second. Not to mention, its accuracy is around 80% before the barrels start to overheat. This gun has earned itself the nickname the Burr because of its sheer power. Replacing the weapon would not only rob the A-10 of its charisma, but would also be a technically challenging and costly endeavor. However, the Avenger is not the A-10's sole armament. It can carry a variety of weapons on its 11 different hardpoints, there are three under the fuselage and eight under the wings. This allows the Warthog to haul up to 7.93 tons of assorted weaponry. Its arsenal includes high-precision anti-tank missiles like the AGM-65A and AGM-65B Maverick, with a firing range of up to 17.4 miles, and the fire-and-forget homing capability. The A-10 can also pack a punch with rockets, high-precision, and conventional bombs, Designers even conjured up a guided high-precision bomb of the SDB or Small Diameter Bomb class, the GBU-39. This 250-pound bomb with a guidance system and wings allows four GBU-39S to be carried per pylon using the BRU-61A rack. With such weaponry, the A-10 can take on formidable targets, such as anti-aircraft missile systems like the Russian Tor M2 and Panzer S-1, all while staying safely out of their reach. But the A-10 Warthog isn't just about its hardware. The updated version of this legendary attack aircraft is set to be integrated with unmanned aerial vehicles, which will transmit target coordinates, adding a whole new layer of versatility. Moreover, the A-10 is renowned for its simple maintenance and doesn't demand special runways. These factors combine to make it an invaluable asset in modern warfare. In the Persian Gulf in 1991, Something unexpected unfolded that caught the attention of military experts and international observers alike. That's where the A-10 Warthog made a name for itself, earning its stripes alongside the renowned F-15 fighter and the stealthy F-117 Nighthawk. As part of Operation Desert Storm, a whopping 144 of these combat vehicles were deployed, and the Warthog had a single primary mission. It was to hunt down enemy tanks, and it delivered impressive results. One of the standout features of the A-10 is its superb maneuverability at low altitudes, a quality that allowed it to deftly evade enemy threats. 
coupled with excellent visibility from the cockpit and a relatively low flight speed, the A-10 proved itself adept at targeting even smaller objectives on its first pass. During Operation Desert Storm, this mighty aircraft managed to disable over a thousand Iraqi tanks, around 2,000 other armored vehicles, 1,200 artillery pieces, and two helicopters. All this was accomplished with the loss of only seven A-10S in combat, with approximately 15 others sustaining damage. The Warthog's durability was put on full display during this period. One of the Thunderbolts suffered severe damage to its wing, but still managed to return to base, a feat deemed impossible for most other aircraft. This goes to show the remarkable resilience built into the A-10's design. The A-10 Warthog wasn't content with just one shining moment in history. It made a return in Operation Iraqi Freedom, which unfolded from March to April 2003. In a harrowing air battle over Baghdad, one A-10 was dealt a devastating blow. Its hydraulic system failed, one engine was severely damaged, and the aircraft was riddled with hundreds of holes in the fuselage, wings, and plumage. Despite all these challenges, the pilot, Colonel Kim Nicole Reed Campbell, managed to navigate this wounded aircraft safely. This feat earned her a well-deserved accolade. The A-10's ability to return to base under such dire circumstances isn't merely due to luck. It's a result of careful aircraft design. Every control system within this beast features three-layer redundant reserves, two 115 or 200-volt three-phase alternators, and an emergency source, a 34 amp hour battery with a 24-volt output. Moreover, an auxiliary power unit provides electricity when the engines aren't running, and ground power sources aren't accessible. What's more, parts of the cockpit and systems are shielded against rounds up to 23 millimeters, adding another layer of protection. Interestingly, the A-10 Warthog's engine placement in separate cells offers an additional safeguard against ground fire. At one point, the decision was made to replace the high-temperature turbofan bypass engines developed by General Electric with modern power plants that offer similar thrust, but come with lower fuel consumption and reduced weight. This enhances the aircraft's performance and efficiency. And remember that the A-10's unique design allows for the possibility of belly landings, which is a pragmatic approach to ensuring the aircraft's survivability. However, nations like Russia and China are actively developing advanced weaponry, not just to bolster their military might, but with a particular focus on posing a threat to the United States, which is undeniably viewed as their primary adversary. These countries have become adept at exporting their formidable weapons to numerous potential challengers of the U.S., effectively extending their influence across the globe. In this heightened era of geopolitical tensions and military innovation, ensuring the A-10 Warthog's relevance and effectiveness becomes crucial. To achieve this, a continuous process of integration and upgrading of countermeasures against these new threats is imperative. The A-10, known for its legendary tank-busting capabilities, needs to adapt to this newly dangerous environment. Now that the A-10 Thunderbolt has undergone some noteworthy upgrades, its capabilities have been enhanced, and its service life has been extended. One of the significant updates includes the introduction of new wings designed to endure an impressive 10,000 flight hours. This isn't just a facelift. It's a testament to the A-10's enduring presence in modern air warfare. But the enhancements don't stop at its wings. The A-10 has transitioned from its analog roots to a more modern digital battlefield. The first step in this evolution was the A-10C Precision Engagement Program, which introduced the hands-on throttle and stick, or HOTUS system. This technology is already familiar to pilots of modern fighter aircraft. With HOTUS, pilots can seamlessly control the plane without removing their hands from the control lever. Another exciting addition to the A-10 Warthog is multifunctional screens, displays on the pilot's helmet, and new optoelectronic containers and radars. The aircraft's multifunctional display may take a page from the F-16's book, complete with two displays as part of the precision engagement package. This means that the pilot can access critical information at a glance, increasing situational awareness. The A-10 is also set to receive a Link-16 connection, a significant upgrade that will facilitate more extensive and efficient data exchange. 
This feature is crucial for real-time communication and coordination during missions. Furthermore, the aircraft is now equipped with helmets featuring the BAE Systems Striker 2 HMD or helmet-mounted display with integrated night vision and target tracking. These advances are part of the ongoing effort to keep the A-10 Warthog relevant in the ever-evolving landscape of modern warfare. But one of the most exciting updates to the A-10 is the addition of synthetic aperture radar, the SRR technology. This capability enhances the aircraft's ability to detail the surrounding area. The radar technology could include the Active Electronically Scanned Array, or ESA radar, the ANASQ-236 Dragon's Eye. ESA provides high-resolution imagery and can detect objects concealed underground, a powerful asset for ground support missions. It's important to note that the upgrades might seem like a considerable package, but it's actually a streamlined version of what was initially proposed. Even in this condensed form, the U.S. Air Force now boasts an A-10 that's more than just an aircraft with wings. It's a full-fledged flying bomb train. Apart from the Warthog, the only other aircraft built for close air support is the Sukhoi Su-25, a Russian creation. This aircraft started production in 1978, following a development trajectory similar to the A-10. The Soviet Air Force recognized the need for a low-altitude, highly survivable aircraft to complement its attack aircraft fleet. Prior to the Su-25, aircraft like the Su-17, Su-22, MiG-23BN, and MiG-27 had a single engine and lacked adequate armor, rendering them highly vulnerable to ground fire. The combat experience in Afghanistan highlighted the urgency for an aircraft with armor protection and two engines to ensure survivability. While the Su-25 is also categorized as an air support attack aircraft, it leans more towards being a multi-purpose attacker. It relies on a combination of higher cruising speeds, maneuverability, and ground cover to evade enemy fire and emerge unscathed. Delving into the design and payload aspects, the Su-25 is notably smaller and lighter, weighing in at 19.3 tons for takeoff compared to the A-10's 22.7 tons. The smaller size of the Su-25 gives it an advantage in cockpit protection. It carries a substantial amount of titanium armor on board, up to 1.2 tons, with armor thickness ranging from 10 to 25 millimeters. In contrast, the A-10's cockpit is safeguarded by nearly 4 centimeters thick titanium armor, weighing over 0.5 tons. However, the Su-25 carries a smaller payload, around 4.4 tons, in comparison to the A-10's 7.99 tons. The A-10's superior payload capacity can be attributed to its larger size and weight. Yet the difference becomes less significant when you consider the number of hardpoints and equipment on board. When it comes to armament and power, both aircraft are equipped with an array of weaponry that strikes fear into the hearts of ground forces. The Su-25 is equipped with a GSH-32 gun, lighter than the A-10's weaponry but with an impressive firing rate of 3,000 revolutions per minute. This gun proves more than adequate for its ground attack missions. The Su-25's arsenal includes rockets, bombs, and surface-to-air missiles, such as the KH-23, KH-25, and KH-29. It should be noted that the Su-25 SM variant can also carry R-73 air-to-air missiles. Now, the engines and performance are where these aircraft diverge significantly. The A-10 is powered by two TF-34 engines, which provide it with a robust performance. These engines, while powerful, are exposed and vulnerable to ground fire. In contrast, the Su-25 features an R-95 engine nestled within the fuselage, boasting an added layer of protection from titanium armor. This feature enhances the Su-25's survivability against ground fire. Additionally, the Su-25's engine is multi-fuel, capable of running on various types of fuel, whereas the A-10's engine is limited to jet fuel. The Su-25 also outpaces the A-10 with a top speed of 590 miles per hour compared to the A-10's 437 miles per hour. However, it's essential to consider the operational range. The Su-25 has a shorter operational range of just 307.5 miles, only about half of the A-10's 640 miles. 
To extend its range, the aircraft can carry extra fuel externally, but this does come at the cost of reduced payload capacity. Takeoff distance is another factor to consider. The Su-25 requires a mere 656 yards of takeoff distance, while the A-10 necessitates 1312 yards. This makes the Su-25 more versatile and capable of taking off from unpaved runways and aircraft carriers. When it comes to survivability, the A-10 has a slight edge. The horizontal stabilizer shields its engines from ground fire, and the aircraft can fly at higher altitudes. Reports indicate that the deployment losses for both aircraft were comparable in conflicts like Afghanistan and Syria. For instance, in Afghanistan it was reported that around 22 Russian Su-25 aircraft were downed during an eight-year deployment period, while no A-10s were shot down during an 18-year deployment in the region. In Syria, one Russian Su-25 was reportedly downed during a three-plus-year deployment, while no A-10s were shot down during a four-plus-year deployment in the region. These facts indicate that while the A-10 may be better suited for certain conditions, such as those seen in Ukraine where dogfights are rare, and the Su-25's low-altitude missions are at high risk of being targeted by manned portable air defense systems or man pads, each aircraft has its strengths. With the new upgrades the Warthog has undergone, though, the Su-25 may not stand much of a chance beside it anymore, a fact that caused Russia to panic. Funny enough, beyond the U-25, another fighter jet is competing with the A-10 Warthog, which is among the U.S. fighter jets. In 2014, a momentous clash of interests took center stage in Congress, involving the future of the A-10 Warthog. At that time, the U.S. Air Force presented a seemingly stark perspective. They claimed that the A-10 had become obsolete on the modern battlefield and should be retired. The reasoning was to allocate manpower elsewhere and free up a significant budget of $4.2 billion for the development and deployment of the F-35 Lightning II the aircraft intended to succeed the Warthog. The U.S. Congress later pitted the A-10 Warthog and the F-35 Lightning II against each other in a battle for supremacy in the realm of close air support missions. This competition wasn't your typical face-off. It was a fly-off, an aviation showdown designed to determine which of these aircraft deserved to be the go-to choice for the U.S. Air Force's close air support operations. However, this fly-off, which was meant to be a decisive debate settler, quickly took a different turn. Instead of being a transparent and impartial assessment, there were murmurs that the Air Force might be orchestrating the contest in a way that favored the F-35 over the A-10. Moreover, secrecy shrouded this event, leaving many with unanswered questions. As it turned out, the fly-off didn't carry the weight one might have expected. The intriguing aspect was that specs and capabilities don't lie despite the controversy and secrecy. One well-known specification of the F-35 is its sleek design, engineered to cut through the air easily. Its high-tech gadgetry and advanced capabilities make it a marvel of modern engineering. However, the flip side of this sophisticated design is that the F-35 struggles to match the A-10 when it comes to flying low and slow in close air support missions. The A-10 is renowned for its ability to loiter for extended periods at low altitudes, flying so close to the ground that it requires a titanium bathtub-like belly to absorb the ground fire it inevitably draws from troops on the battlefield. This level of proximity to the action is almost unmatched. However, the Air Force's priority isn't to elevate the A-10's strengths. Instead, they seem more inclined to bring the F-35 up to speed. Investments amounting to a staggering $400 billion have poured into the development of the F-35, making it the most expensive weapons program in the Pentagon's history. Understandably, the Air Force intends to maximize its utilization, aiming for it to serve as a top-of-the-line fighter and a multi-purpose asset. The significance of the A-10's continued service is also underscored by voices within the military establishment, though. General James Holmes, the Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategic Plans and Requirements, emphasizes the need to strike a balance when considering aircraft options. It's not just about finding a replacement. It's about identifying the sweet spot that combines the available resources with the unique capabilities that the A-10 Warthog has consistently brought to the battlefield. 
This barrage of the A-10 upgrades addressed the Air Force's concerns regarding the Warthog's survivability significantly, cementing its position as a stalwart in close air support missions. With both the A-10 and F-35 on the same team, the Air Force's focus finally shifted towards outfitting the Warthog with fifth-generation technology. Ultimately, the A-10 Warthog is a powerful reminder of a fighter's enduring capabilities when it's prioritized and continuously updated. Its ability to keep up with the times and remain a formidable force on the battlefield showcases the remarkable flexibility and resilience of military aircraft designed for a specific purpose but capable of evolving to meet new challenges. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there!